Hello everybody and welcome to the GMS Magazine channel and no, I am evidently not alone. I am Paco Garcia. I am David Brayshaw. Yes, he is. I know because I've spent with him all weekend uh, showing him around Valencia and everything. And however, we're here now to talk about Ninja Squat. The recent game that you've released at Essen Although you, didn't, I know you had it at Gen Con already. Yeah. So you're a traitor. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the GMS magazine. Well, videos, I guess. You game. Backspindle game, as uh, you know, if you follow the channel and if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe now. Thank you very much indeed for subscribing. Uh, I've been a fan of the game since, well, since God's Gods, uh, the very, very beginning. And I've known David and Leo for a very long time. And I have to admit one thing. It's very weird to have you alone here because I don't think I have ever seen you without your Backspindle pun. Yeah. So this yeah. is... This is the first. Yeah, he's so, he's at home in charge. Yeah, he is. He's looking after everything while I'm away doing this interview. I don't even want to imagine <laughs> what you're going to find. Leo, what are you doing now? Oh my God, well, you, the mess you're going to find when you go. Sorry, no, I was joking, Leo. I'm, I'm joking. So anyway, you've been at it for a very long time now. Um, yeah. Now, I'm finding interesting. Ninja Squad Squad is uh, a game that you've released this year. You've always released your games as Essen, yeah. but this year's been at Gen Con. No, this year we released at the UK Games Expo, but a different game. Okay, but at, so you've, you've released two games this year. Yeah. But Ninja Squad and the previous one, Mon Quest, which you should take a look at, seriously. Uh, there was a Kickstarter and that went down okay, and then the game was produced and it was sent to backers. So fair enough that it wasn't released, neither Gen Con or anything else. Yeah. Uh, the UK game sucks because you already had it. Yeah. So it would make no sense to wait another six months yeah. for Essen. But usually you've done your things at Essen. Why did you release Ninja Squad this time at Gen Con instead of waiting oh. until Spiel? Well, we actually released it at Spiel last year. Okay. So then it was taken by Asmodee America for Gen Con and then they oh. sold out of it at Gen Con. So this is your 2018 release, not your 2019? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it only hit America this year. That's why I was confused. Yeah. That Because I thought that this is the game that you released this year at Spiel. No, no, uh, it's, it's been this year we didn't release any games because we had one quest from the UK Games Expo. Gotcha. That's what happens, people. <laughs> no, get lost. I'm not being an idiot. I just didn't go to Gen Con and I didn't go to the UK Games Expo and I haven't gone to Spiel this year either, so I'm a little bit out of the loop. Yeah, but you went to Dragon Meat. I did, but you weren't there. No. <laughs> so that's why that's why Dragon Meat wasn't as good yeah. as it could have been. It's still pretty cool though. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, we're here to ask, um, we've gathered here together to ask about Ninja Squad, because I know very little about it except that it has got some soda pop minis yeah which is pretty cool by the way uh, viewers of uh, different denominations if you see me looking at my phone i'm not trying to be rude at all but unfortunately i am without my husband recording this which means that i have to rely on my tasty little phone to control all the camera work which means that i need to look at the screen so i can see what i'm doing otherwise Anyway, this game, this is the second game you release with Minix. Uh, is it the, same, the second time you play with Soda Pop, or this is the first time you play with Soda Pop Minix? Um, well, basically, the game came to us by the designer Jan Yegorov, mm -hmm. and we, let's say, polished the game a little bit, made it a little bit more strategic, a little bit more family friendly. And at that stage, he had basically a board and, you know, a timing system, which was fun and, and, you know, pressurized and not everybody liked it, but it was still quite a nice little game, which we saw potential in. Okay. Um, so when we redesigned and re-polished the game to make it learn the game and then play the, 
you know, a player versus player mm-hmm. version of it, which obviously wasn't in the initial idea that he'd presented to us. Um, and then we thought about how do we polish this game? So, you know, obviously visually you want it to feel and look like it should play. Yeah. So we come up with the idea of the little, he already had the idea of the lights and so on, but we come up with the idea of the little, you know, the, the actually light tiles on the board mm-hmm. with the clear cubes. So even in dim light, it gives you the idea that you're actually passing through a lit area of a city street. And this is like going through a city rooftops mm-hmm. to, to, you know, deal away with the, the Shogun. Um, and then we obviously had at that time, we had a, a partnership with Ninja Division and Soda Pop in America, okay. who have done the Ninja All-Stars. Mm-hmm. And basically we approached them and said, look, you know, we're thinking about doing this game, but we think these would be a very nice fit aesthetically for the game. And they are. So we agreed that they would make a guest appearance in the game and hence every game comes with four Ninja All-Stars so you get to play the the various little characters there um, from Ninja All-Stars and again it's totally unconnected with what Ninja All-Stars do. So I suppose in in essence somebody could have a Ninja All-Star mini of their own and they could bring it along and put it into the game and play their own version of it if they wanted to. Okay, but I I don't really have a clue what the game is all about, although I have some ninjas and it's got to the pop and uh, I'm likely to like it because I tend to like their games. So uh, firstly, I think we need to take a look at what's inside the box so you can, uh, this is going to, oh my God, this is a first. This is the first time that I'm going to do an unboxing because um, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the unboxings I do, I very rarely take a look at what's inside the box before I open it. So the reaction that you get from me is actually pretty genuine. You know, um, this time is the first time I'm going to do an unboxing in front of the publisher, <laughs> okay. which adds a new layer of pressure, probably on you, because you know me well enough to know that I'm not going to say, I'm not going to shut up if I say something. <laughs> I see something I like. As long as we get the plastic off, it's always a good start. Well, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's the game. The game comes with cards, right? Cards and minis and tiles. Okay. That's the test of fire. Yeah. If I can open the cards easily or not. Yeah. If maybe. I can open the cards easily, then the game is very good. Well, it's a bit like this. If a man still has on his, his own teeth, yep. many things are possible. Like cracking nuts. Yeah. What were you thinking? Eating chocolate. Yeah. Well, you can do that without tea. No, you have to suck it then. The problem with it that is. melts in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Oh. <laughs> this could, yes, so you know, viewers, it could go down into a very weird conversation in the next five minutes. Uh, don't worry about it, we're fine. Uh, you, maybe. Okay. Um, the, the box is actually a little bit thicker than the usual box. This is pretty good. I like it. Okay. Um, Mm, Thank the, you. It's it's the printing is solid, but very very sharp indeed. Uh, you can see from there, viewers, uh, the the colors are very vivid. Uh, everything is there's nothing that's um, pixelated or anything, which is very good. And the theme I like a lot. The, the, these four little guys are very cute indeed. The rules. Okay. Big font, which I like. Uh, mm. This may be a little bit not contrasting enough for some people with yeah. with color blindness, but yeah. okay. We do try to accommodate the, the color blind audience as well. Okay. I think well, it's important. Yes, that might be a little bit too light, but they will just see that's a very light gray. Yeah. Uh, more, more often than not. See, this that size, it's easier. Yeah. To see, uh, I do like the size of most things in here, which is nice. I do like the use of the bold lettering to highlight a few things and underlining. Yeah. To highlight a few things. Well, I think I think I mean when we put our games out to you know players and reviewers, mm-hmm. um, often in this day and age, reviewers have so many games to review that they scan the rules. And I think it's important that you put things in the rules that if they're going to scan the rules, yeah. jump out at them. Yeah, I because agree. Because scanning a rule book for a game can do it a terrible injustice. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important not just for the players, but also for the reviewers, because that could be the buzz about the game. And if they miss that, you know, they don't want to go back and reshoot a video and say, well, actually, I should have picked up on this. So 
we try to highlight those things in the rules. That's a very good idea. I mean, even if it's just for, for just for the public, mainly for the public, because they're the ones who are going to play the game the most. So I think that's excellent. Eh? Mm. Um, I, 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 do, I have to say, I do like the claim layout that, that you have. Everything seems to have enough space to breathe. Maybe a little bit too close in here, but those are just nitpicky things that Leo will be shouting at the screen because yeah. he's a professional uh, graphic designer and that's uh, he doesn't care what I think, which is fair enough. <laughs> Now we have, ooh, is this? That's a board, that's a board piece. That's one board piece. One board piece, okay, so just one board piece. Good, because yeah. I, I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, the, actually this is quite thick, I like yeah. it. And um, how oh, very solid, and it hurts when you hit yourself with it, which is, as it should be, and it's double-sided. Yeah. Uh, I like the cartography quite a lot. Mm. The Japanese garden type idea on one side, and rooftops. That's good. Of the same. Cityscape on the other. That's pretty good. Mm. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Cheats, we have uh, one set of cheats. Now, don't tell me, this <laughs> is the first player. It is. Yes! It's your shirt. <laughs> That's your, your throwing star, which. I have seen games where it has been thrown. You see, this is the sort of game that if you had kickstarted it, yeah. you could say, stretch goal, we give you a real shuriken. Yeah, well, that would be dangerous, but yeah. But fuck. You can get rubber shurikens. They can be thrown and they may not, put your eye out, but they'll not kill you. But the problem, you can have another eye, so that's, that's okay. <laughs> you, you still have chance. Okay, this is the same thickness of, as the board, which is very good because it's um, it makes it really... Um, this is really... I mean, I would have to make quite an effort to bend this and destroy it mm. and i don't have any reason to do it don't do that no i'm not gonna do that but if you wanted to do it you would have to make quite an effort yes. so that's good and when it falls on the it doesn't break which is very good uh the chits do come out quite nicely yeah which is very good because that way they're not going to you know mm -hmm. bring the whole thing with it and then we have One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven boards. Seven boards. Mm -hmm. All of them double sided. Yeah. They actually, I like the cartography. I mean, the water looks a little bit more like fabric than water. Yeah. But everything else looks pretty good. Yeah. You have this the shadow is... and possibly the hint of like koi carp and things going on there. It's yeah. A little bit suggestive and you know, the shadows of the sun, sun shining through the fence and things with the globes. I like the cartography a lot, actually. Who did that? That was Alan Perry. He's actually the guy who did the 3D sculpts for Morn Quest, and he also did the colouring of Morn Quest. Yeah. He did that. He's very talented. He is chap good. From, chap from Belfast. He's good, and I like how everything fits perfectly within mm. the tiring that, that you said. That's actually... Yeah. It's got all the proper Japanese kanji on the symbols, mean guards, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. That's, yeah, that's actually... So attention to detail, yes, I have to have to say um, uh, a friend of mine who lived in um, Am Amori in Japan. Okay. She was a Discworld fan and a matter of Discworld convention, Aoife. And mm -hmm. Aoife did all the Japanese stuff with us. And Very cool. The game is actually named after Amori in the theme. Okay. If you read about Amori, it's the Blue Forest. And if you saw on the, um, the back of player board of this side, you've mm -hmm. got the blue forest at the end, that's your end goal. That's good. Escaping. So it's sort of, it was nice to do a game based on where she lived as a sort of little thank you. That's very it. nice. That's a very nice touch indeed. Mm -hmm. Right, we also have these um, little cubes, cubes of uh, goodness, <laughs> which we tend to like quite a lot. And actually they are pretty heavy. I mean, usually these cubes tend to be like wishy-washy, they are plasticky, mm -hmm. but these are actually quite, quite heavy in my hands. Yeah. So that feels quite nice, actually. Well, it's it's again it's an end, it's an entry type game for families with children, really. Okay. So it has to feel tac tactile, nice. Yep. You know, because kids like moving with things that feel do. something. That's true. We, and we, big kids like that as well. We do. <laughs> okay. So now we have old meeples. Meeples. Guards meeples. We have meeples. Um, why does this game have minis and meeples? Well, 
we couldn't really afford maple well, minis, minis. minis for all the guards. So wooden maples will have to survive unless you have an army of minis of bad guys. Okay. Which is, you know, about 30 miniatures of, you know, bad guys. So given the guards, we have two types of guards. We have guards that stay still and we have guards that will patrol. Okay, and the rats are the ones that stay the, still? No, they patrol. They patrol, okay. Yeah. I had a 50% chance to get that one grind and I got a red. <laughs> Reds are dangerous. Red, red means danger, they move. Red means danger. But I know, but it could be black or uh, sneaky and they move because they're sneaky. No, they're black because they're stand, handy, hiding in the shadows. So you don't see them. Anyway. We're the ninja soldier. We there. both could be right. We're if I have assigned the game, We're these ones would be the ones that would They'd be, be green. Made. Because they stand on the grass. Yes. <laughs> Seems that's probably true. <laughs> Nicky Gillies said <laughs> he can't see thee. We've never designed the game, but if we did, it would be the greenest game ever. Right, and let's go elsewhere. By the way, yes, I am leaving minis until the very end. Get over it. Keep watching. Card deck number one. Okay, these are going to be very easy to open, so this is going to be an absolutely fantastic game. Look, 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 look. Okay, let me let me just get a camera. Let me get a camera. Listen to this. Listen, listen. No, it's not good. No noise. There is no groaning with frustration. Yeah. How amazing. Slick opening. Yeah, I like it. We do okay. try. But uh, I like that they're laminated and the thickness is actually not too bad. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. pretty okay. I think there might be just about enough space in the box to keep this um, when you leave them, although not horizontally. I think this is a bit too tight. So if you leave the cards, and they're not going to fit in there. So this yeah. separator may have to go away. That's sort of to hold them in place a little bit. Yeah. Because once you put the boards and the rubric on top, they stay in there. Yeah, not when you just leave them. No. When you just leave them, there will, not, there will not be enough space on the side. Let me mm. show you the viewers. There will not be enough space in here. And they will come up like Both another like hard third. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They will come out about yeah, that's that okay. much, give or take. Yeah. So it will be hard. That's something, that's something that most game designers and publishers, mm. it's very hard for you guys to, to think about and, and yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, the taxonomy of the card is actually pretty good. There isn't, there's no language dependency that no, I can see. No, no, And it's just... They're all, uh, they're all in symbol. Yeah, and I presume this is going to be the symbols of where they can move and yep. in what direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Clever. And now... I prompted them on that one. <laughs> oh. You didn't open these cards? No, because, oh, they're different, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have to yeah, because the they're more yeah. amusing cards. Yeah. Okay. They've, they've got uh, images as opposed to movement. But I'm finding this one difficult to open. That's just because you haven't found the overlap, which looks like it's... I don't know. I exactly. the overlap is. <laughs> it's somewhere. I know what it is. There it is. It's on, on the side. It's on the side. But I cannot get to it. So yeah. this game is suffering now. No, it wasn't So I problem. just have to break <laughs> it. It I wasn't just, a problem. I just had to break. I'm sorry, this game was not play tested enough after production. Yeah. <laughs> plastic. Plastic yeah. string. But, and then you have a little thing. Oh, you have kitty cats. Yes. Cats. You have a gong. Broken boards. Broken boards. Uh, that uh, invalidates one of the movements, evidently. Mm. Stops somebody in the track. That's a samurai. I like the Samuel. Kind of Ooh, dangerous. And look at the geisha. That's a geisha girl who you just don't want her to see you because she raised the alarm. Okay. We can guess what that is. Uh, that's somebody sleeping. That's a sleeping guard, yes. This is correct. Yeah, but The Spanish guard, he's asleep. Yeah, well, uh, they all are, believe me. <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. Uh, uh, I'm missing the silhouette in here. A lot of information mm -hmm. uh, about this. Because it's really to do with symbolism and darkness and the evening. It's shadows, what you see. Yeah. It's the outline of what you would make up. Okay. Uh, then we have a shuriken. Yes, these are weapons cards. Ooh, and the nunchaku. Do you know how I can use these? Do I know how to use them? Hmm? Yes. I learned how to use them. Also, yeah. Yeah. 
How do you do and that? The ones are good where they hit in the back. I know. I have a, <laughs> I, I had some wooden ones and I did hit myself in different parts of my body when yep. I was learning. Yeah. And it hurts like hell. I have wooden ones too. I'll yeah. say is check the string regularly. Yes. Oh, well, I have one with actually with chain. Mm. Um, yeah. I did learn, try to learn how to use the uh, yeah tonfa, and um, that wasn't that successful. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a good weapon. I, I did. They use it in the police force in I, England at times. I just wasn't very, or something. I just wasn't very good at it at being spectacular, and it went to other no. places. So um, anyway, so we have a uh, lance, and we have some arrows. Flaming arrow. Yes. That's good. And we have a breathing straw. Mm. Reed, whatever. Yeah. And then we have a some wine. Oh, it's water. Yeah. And then a whistle. Mm -hmm. This actually are pretty good. Um, I like it. Oh, a kite. A kite? You think there's a kite? No, that's an aerial runway. Uh, I can see yeah. that image shows them coming down off the roof. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Again, it was Alan Perry did the artwork on this oh, as well. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah, a pipe. Nasty. A lump of barrels you can hide behind. Perfect hiding place. Fireworks, which you know about in Valencia. No, oh yes, we have like <laughs> like every day. It's just you know, but seriously, it's like a daily occurrence. So if you've been in a war zone and have PTSD, don't come to Valencia in March. Yeah. Whatever, <laughs> because it really is dangerous. I'm not joking. Fireworks. Yeah. Yeah, in Belfast they used to shoot the fireworks up the street horizontally. No, we for we, fun. No, we we do for fun. <laughs> But yeah. we should have this guy. Yeah, we try not to kill anyone. With these, this was a teenager's sense of amusement. Now, I have to say, this is the thickest buggy I have ever had in my hand. Okay, thank you. This to is worth, worth mentioning. This is to protect the little minis. Worth mentioning. Yeah. And now we have the little minis that are absolutely adorably cute. Yeah. As you could expect. TV style minis. Yes, I like this. Let me put them here and see if the other camera is going to. Pick them a little bit better. No, I need to. I will show you later in photographs. Don't you worry about that, viewers. But these are actually super little cute things. Mm. Oops. Oh. We have an arrow with erectile dysfunction. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh dear. He's um, fine now. He's cute. I, I know. I know. Well, you just have to, you know. He's called Kyagra. Kyagra. <laughs> He's fine. Welcome to my life. <laughs> and then a few baggies, which is always a very welcome addition. Yes. So anything. We is... feel this is really important. Yes. So um, so far, I have to say, so good uh, for this game. We are, though, going to take a look at how it plays in the next video, uh, which I hope you don't mind showing. You know how to play this game, right? I'll think of something. Yeah. Oh, OK, that's, that's what I mean. We have more rules. Rules. Yeah, this is uh, the Dawn Escape the Rules supplement, and there are optional cooperative rules because you have how many play modes in this game? Um, there's three in the box, so this adds a fourth play mode. Not bad, not bad at all. So tune in, please do subscribe and um, don't go away because we are going to release the how to play video next to no time so subscribe so you can actually click on the little bell button so you get a notification when we upload videos and that way you will never ever miss another of the absolutely awesome video that we make with our friends at Steve.